One, two, three. <laughs> Jesse James and Frank James. <laughs> Billy Kid, all the rest. <laughs> supposed to be some bad kid. <laughs> I than the West. <laughs> but when they dub me <laughs> and my gangster ways, <laughs> they hung up their guns. Walk down the street, all the girls that I meet say he's a gangster. I robbed the local beauty contest of their first place when I'm they found it with me out in Hollywood, eating a big steak denim. They try to get her to go back to collect her prize. She stood up and told him. You just don't realize Early in the morning Days of love Oh yeah When I walk in a bar Girls run from the bar Said he's a days of love Oh White horse cat. I ride across the borderline. I rope 65 girls and I kiss them all at the same time. I take 25 or 30 and I put them all on a freight. A million dollar reward for me. Each and every state. The chef said, Did you get top Watson? In a very deep voice. I said, Yes, brother chef. And that's your wife on the back of my heart. Hey, my friends, what's going on? Jake Andrews here with Blues Rock Guitar Lessons, coming at you with Gangster of Love by Johnny Guitar Watson. Johnny Guitar Watson, my man, huge influence on my music and guitar playing. Originally born in Houston, Texas in 1935, he moved out to LA and got immersed into the music scene out there in the late 40s and early 50s. What is so cool about Johnny Guitar Watson is that his style early on is very influential in blues and R&B guitar playing and uh, it gradually evolved, it got funkier and funkier in the late 50s into the 60s. Finally, he really completely reinvented himself in the early 70s as the father of funk. And uh, man, his music got super funky by the end of the 70s, even going into early rap as well. So it's so cool because uh, musically he spanned so many different styles. A lot of the blues purists really only care to look at his early style and his early music recordings. But his later funk stuff is so cool as well. He's most well known for songs like Ain't That a Bitch and A Real Mother For Ya. But this song here, Gangster of Love, is probably his most well known song from his earlier era. And uh, what's funny, he was originally billed as Young John Watson. There was a movie in the early mid 50s called uh, Johnny Guitar that came out. And when that was a big hit, he decided to change his name. So Johnny Guitar Watson was born at that time. And if you're not familiar with his music, you really need to get into him. He was just a hilarious guy. His showmanship and uh, just his swagger, his style, really flamboyant outfits and, uh, and just kind of outrageous in general. Very cool guy. So this song, Gangster of Love, of course, later in the later 60s, uh, Steve Miller recorded it. And then, of course, even later in the 70s, 
with the Joker, you of course recognize the line, some people call me the gangster of love. That's another nod to this song. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everybody, so we are in the key of G, and we're down here in our first position right off this low G root node, all right? So if we did a bar chord, and we're just doing one, four, five, one, four, five. However, we're gonna do some different chord shapes in here as well. Some seventh chords. And right here, instead of playing the full bar chord, we're gonna be playing kind of these double stops, these hammered parts here. Uh, this is used so much in blues and rock and roll as well, variations of this. So if you think about the F chord shape, okay, I hope you know that shape. Your first finger is barring the first and second strings, third is on the major third, and then our ring finger is on the root. Okay, that's really just the half shape of the full bar chord. So, if you think about playing around this F shape, what we're going to be doing is hammering, we're going to bar the first, second, and third strings, and we're going to be hammering into the major third only on our middle finger. And we're going to strum all three strings. So this takes a little practice. Okay, but very common, for instance, say on Texas Flood, Stevie Ray. Okay, um, I'm a man, Muddy Waters. Okay, something like that. Even Chuck Berry. So this lick is constantly used in blues and rock and R&B. Now, the lick that is being played throughout the rhythm on this song is this one. Okay, so he sings a line and we play that riff in between, kind of like, I'm a man, okay, manish boy, okay. So you're going to start out on your ring finger on the root note, and you're going to pick that and just collapse it, kind of hinge there at your wrist and collapse down to the third, second, and first strings. Or really just the third and second strings you can strum. And now from the back side, we're gonna come in and hammer onto that major third. Back to the root, okay? If you want, you can get the first string as well. But really, you only need to get the third and second, so. And that's the tricky part, is just getting this hammer on to where your middle finger comes down, gets this note, but it doesn't block the string underneath it. So you might need to bring your middle finger um, a little higher up on the string than you normally would, okay? So, once again. And notice that timing, that phrasing. Da, 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 okay? Ba, 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 okay? That first, we kind of hesitate here. And then it's da, da, right into those next parts. And really, that's it, y'all. He's going to sing a line, and we're going to play this riff, just back and forth answering it. We're going to do it seven times. So we're going to come in on this riff. Like one, two, three. Jesse James and Frank James. Billy Kid, all the rest. There's supposed to be some bad camps out there in the West. But when they dub me and my gangs the ways. Okay, so that was number seven. Okay, at this point, he's singing a line. Uh, they packed up their guns and made it to the grave. And what I'm doing there, what he's doing, is coming up to a G7 up here. So we're using this C7 shape, but I'm bringing it up here to the 10th fret. All it is is a C shape with my pinky on the 
third string, which is the flat seven, the dominant seven. Very important chord shape in blues and R&B and funk and rock. And notice I'm muting out both E strings. Okay, and what I'm playing when I come up here is triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so a bar of triplets. And it sounds like... Okay, so I do the seventh one of these riffs. Two, three, four. And see how I kind of overemphasize the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, we're moving right along, y'all. Uh, now, without any break, we're playing on the four right now, which is C, C7. What we're doing here is once again back to this kind of F shape, and we're breaking it down, and I'm doing this. Okay, four rounds of that. So I'm starting with the hammer on here and hitting it twice and then barring across here, the four over the one. Okay. And the timing is like dun, 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 dun. It's a shuffle. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm over emphasizing the. Now, to really make this actually a seventh, I would bar the fourth string as well. That's a little trickier, but that sounds great. I'm going to bar that fourth string above it, but still hammer on here. And I'm going to go. So now I'm strumming strings four, three, and two. That sounds great. Now, come back to the one, G, and do the exact same thing, whether you use the uh, fourth string or not. Okay, four rounds, and immediately jump into a D7 right here, which is the five, and break. Two, three. Two, three, four, okay? So you see I hit that five and I break. Two, three, now walk it back and break. All right? And at that point, so we're gonna go, I walk down the street. The girls that I meet say he's a, and go back into this. So just two rounds of it. And then one more hammer on. Finally, we play the turnaround tagline, which is. You got me? You feel me? So. And that's the end of the verse. Now, at that point, you would immediately go back into. Okay. And the second verse is going to be identical to the first verse. Uh, let's go ahead and play that from the beginning. One, and I won't sing, I'm just going to count the timing. A one, two, three. Da, da. Da, da. Da, da. Two, three. Da, da. Da, da. Two, three, four. Ba-da-ba-da-da. 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 
Now at this point, uh, we are going back into the, the regular piece here. But it's transitioning into the solo, the lead part, okay? So we're not gonna hit this line. We're gonna do this. Two, three, two, three, four. Okay, and cut it off there. And he really, he goes right into the lead. Now, Johnny Guitar Watson's lead style, especially back then, is real staccato. He's not using a pick. He used the capo a lot, actually, and he gets a lot of those open strings. We're not using a capo, but he just has, he has a great attack to his lead playing. Even though it's pretty simple, a great attack and a great phrasing on his stuff. So he's coming in here on the second string, sliding into the root, and he's doing triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then he's gonna go into this lick. Six times, six rounds of that. So, so far we have. And kind of hesitates. And then he does this. Okay, so he's back in the first box. And then he does that lick. On the third string. Now slide into. and come back, hammer into the major third. And then finally, very cool. All right, so we're coming out of the second verse, the turnaround, and I'm gonna play this slowly. I'm gonna go. into the third verse, okay? Let's do that again full speed, coming out of the second verse. Okay, and now this last verse is just like the other verses, but he's going to extend it. I think he's going to do this riff 11 times. Let's count it out. So we've just done the solo. I jump on my white horse, Kelly. Right across the borderline. I rode 65 girls. I kiss them all at the same time. I take 25 or 30 and put them all on a free million dollar reward for me each and every state. The sheriff said, Is you get Tom Watson in a very deep voice? I said, Yes, brother, chef. Okay, and that's where we go into. Okay, so that final third verse, he's actually going to do this riff here, the breaks, 11 times. And the last one, two, three, four, into our G7. Now, it's just the same as the first and se second verses. And back to the one.
okay? And this is where we end it. Two, three, two, three, four, and then we go. Now where we would normally do the turnaround, we're gonna go. And we're gonna throw this ninth chord in. We're gonna take it sharp, so it's a G sharp nine, back to G nine. Now this is a very important blues chord shape as well, this ninth chord. We're not even playing the root, the root's kind of implied, but it is the Stormy Monday chord. You can remember it, it kind of looks like a open D chord shape up here with our pinky on the second string. And we go. So this would be G9. You can also remember it because this same chord shape, if I drop everything down a string, now becomes a diminished. All right, but up here, this is a G9. So once again, now he does play a little lick kind of in the background. Something like that. Just a real simple minor pentatonic lick. There you go, my friends. Have fun playing with this one. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed that lesson and learned some history about Johnny Guitar Watson, JGW, my man. So if you would, please leave the video a like if you did enjoy it, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Help me build up those numbers and hit the bell icon so you can get an email notification from me when I put out a video like this. I'm trying to put them out at least once or twice a week for you guys to enjoy. Hit me up for some private Zoom lessons if you're interested, and I will see you next time.